boom, we're up. Hello everyone, it's been a while, hasn't it? It's been like a fortnight since I did the live stream. And this is a tad impromptu and I didn't really promote this one with a community post or a tweet or anything. So I'm not expecting many people to show up. I just, let, let me give you some, let me give you some uh, details about how things have been going in the Haven. Uh, so basically, basically I had two weeks off. I had a two week break. Um, Cause I've been working hard and it was lots of fun. I was, you know, I feel energized now. I'm reinvigorated. I'm ready to go headfirst into Hot D stuff, basically, right? So for the next few months before Hot D comes out, I'm going to be making a bunch of videos not to be released when they're finished, but to be released in June when in June and July when House of the Dragon is coming out. So when Hot D comes out, we're going to have, like, let's say episode one, for example. There'll be uh, a live stream. There'll be a review. There might be a breakdown. But then on top of that, there'll be, like, a big video uh, dedicated to talking about some kind of law aspect that I've predicted in advance, right? So an example would be, we know that the Blackwoods and Brackens are going to be in House of the Dragon. So I'll be making a Blackwood Bracken video to be released when they first appear in the show. Um... And that way I get to post lots and lots of stuff uh, during Hot D. But it does mean that there'll be slightly less content uh, for the next couple of months. It, I, I'm basically thinking maybe like one video a month to keep the channel afloat while working on stuff in the background. Um, but either way, I'll be working super hard. So that's why I had that break. And if you want to know what video is next for this, either this week or the week after, it's going to be the real Varus. We're moving on to Varus now, the real Varus. So that'll be a fun one. But I finished my break. I thought to myself, you know what? I haven't done live stream in a while, so I need to do a live stream. I didn't even do my Sand Snakes live stream, my classic commentary track over my own video. So we'll be doing a Sand Snakes live stream today, and tomorrow we might be doing a Sand Snake Theory Iceberg, and then I also have another stream or two planned with Quinn the GM to make up for my absence, my unexplained absence, basically. And also, yeah, I thought I'd... um. I thought I'd break things up a bit and actually be on time. Well, I was like three minutes late, but for me, that's insane. So, before we begin the video, um, like the video to help it spread. Uh, have fun in the chat. If you want to send me a specific question or whatever, then you can send it in the form of a super chat. But you can also send me a tip via Streamlabs. The link is in the description. Yes, it is. The Streamlab link is in, in the description. You can send a donation. And it means that I what you send, I receive 100% of. Because when you send a Super Chat via YouTube, YouTube takes a big chunk of it. So with Streamlabs, it means that all of the money you're sending, I'm able to get. And YouTube isn't, like, pinching it away. Um, but if not, um, you don't have to. You can just chill in the chat and have fun. Uh, as always, I've got a Patreon if you want to check it out. I have merchandise. Hey, i got to start promoting the merchandise more. I've got some cool beanies. Have you seen the beanies? you seen the t-shirts? Oh, they're looking kind of good. Anyway, that's enough. This is probably going to be a smaller live stream. So let's just... Let's just dive into the snacks. Let's begin. The sand snakes. That's very quiet. I'll make it a bit louder. I don't want it to be the same volume as my audio because I've had complaints in the past, people saying... They can't tell when it's the video playing and when it's me speaking. The Sand Snakes. Oberyn Martell's daughters in the show and in the books are very different. Ooh, ooh, that was a bit laggy. Was that just me? Breeds of serpent. So yeah, um, it was very fun designing the Sand Snakes for this video. In fact, I'll wait a second for all these of them to show up. These are angsty warrior women copied and pasted three times. While these are a diverse array of fighters, schemers, and poisoners, each one representing a different facet of Oberyn's personality. These are the real... Oh, I thought there was a, um... My bad. I thought there was a shot. <laughs> I thought there was a shot where it had all the sand snakes in a row. Okay, I'll go back a bit then. But it was lots of fun designing the sand snakes, because, of course, they are so diverse in the book. They look so different. They act differently. Well, they, they all have the same vibe, right? They, they all have that dangerous red viper energy but they have different mothers and so obara is the big strong spear wielding warrior woman you know she's large she's big bone she's masculine so i i gave her a kind of a wider i used a wider um 
body for her. I had her hair scrunched up at the back. Um, I gave her the same nose that I have Oberyn, that Oberyn's ca character has. Um, and then for Nymeria, of course, she's more ladylike. So I gave her, I kind of made her slender, slight curves. I gave her a smaller, prettier nose. And she's got the, the, um, the braid at the back. Now, interestingly enough, because I really go deep into the character description so I know how to, exactly how I'm going to draw them. Interestingly enough, um, Nymeria is described as having pale skin in A Feast for Crows. Uh, but then in A Dance of the Dragons, she's described as having tanned skin. So it's like, I'm not sure what to go for, so I went with tanned, just because then we have the contrast with Tyene, who is pale, blue-eyed, blonde, takes after her mother a lot. But another thing that's mentioned is that the one thing visually that unites all the sand snakes is they all have their father's eyes. They may have different skin colours and tones and eye colours and hair colours and hairstyles, but they all have his eyes. Not, not the colour, but something about the shape of it, something about the look of it. And so I thought I, I, I'd add something. So I, as you can see, um, all of my eyes, I always put a little glimmer on top. Well, I decided to put a glimmer on top and a glimmer underneath. So you can see that on, for example, Tyene, I have a lighter blue at the top and bottom. And then Nymeria, I have a lighter brown top and bottom. You can't see it as much with Obara, but I've done that. So I decided to give them like shimmering eyes and a kind of a curved glare. So that their upper eyelids or eyebrows, whatever you want to call them, are kind of curved upwards quite dramatically. Um, and... They, it, they all have that specific look and I just wanted that I wanted to use that to tie them together because I wasn't sure how else I could represent them as having the same kind of eyes you know um yeah three different breeds of serpent these are angsty warrior women copied and pasted three times yeah that's what's annoying about the show the show snakes um and I remember there's like a, there's a video oh these are a diverse there's a video of a, a Comic-Con, I think, or something similar, where the Sand Snakes are being revealed for the first time. And they're like, yeah, we have the Sand Snakes and the audience are cheering. And they're like, woo, because this is, you know, post-season four. So generally, it's the, ad the adaptation's been quite close. And they're like, um, we have the Obara for Duran, and, uh, sorry, the actor for Duran, and it's Alexander Siddick, an established famous actor. He's in Deep Space Nine and so on. Um, and everyone cheers like, yeah, and they're like, and we have Obara, and then it shows the actress who plays Obara, and everyone's like, yeah, yeah, she kind of looks like Obara, you know, she's, um, she's got tanned skin, she's kind of, I think she was like holding a sword, um, in the clip they showed, and she was like, I'm so-and-so, and I'm gonna play Obara, and everyone's like, yeah, and then it, it's like, and Nymeria, and then it showed Jessica Henwick, who's like, and I'm gonna play, um, Nymeria, and then everyone's kind of like, oh, and she's like holding daggers, and everyone's like, oh no, she's holding a whip, and everyone's like, uh oh. Yeah, okay. And then it's like, and, now, and I'm playing Tyene, and she was like holding two daggers. And then everyone's just kind of like, woo, yeah. And just kind of confused. I maybe, this was years ago, so I might be misremembering it. But I swear it just got more and more confused as they were like, why are they all just like, why are they all wielding weapons? And why do they not look like how they're describing the book? Wait, what? Uh, it is bizarre to me that they would turn them all into generic warrior Gen generic warriors instead of being like one of them's a warrior one of them's the kind of um the scheming lady uh one of them's the the sweet innocent daughter of a scepter who's secretly a bit of a sociopathic poisoner and then there's sorella who's you know the the learned one who's interested in history and you know all, all this stuff and they just it's like if you're going to make why would you sp why would you spend the money why would you waste the money casting three women to play the same character when you can just hire one actress to play one character that being Ariane Martel who I think is far more interesting <laughs> has the potential to be far more engaging and interesting than the three sand snakes it just ever again I don't know I don't know overdo it right because everyone roasts the sand snakes everyone goes off on them we know we know it's just I'm just confused very confused also Ilaria <laughs> I love this picture <laughs> I do like this picture actually you know, Bara just looks so moody, and Tyene's trying to look edgy, and Alari is just like, <laughs> just smiling at the camera. She's like the proud mum, and all her daughters are like, ugh, 
Mum, I don't want to take this photo. Um, Real women copied and pasted three times. While all these are a diverse array of fighters, schemers, and poison. Oh, this is sorry. This um, for some reason, this video is lagging a bit. Let me try that again. Diverse array of fighters, schemers, and poisoners. Each one represents. Yeah, it's being a bit laggy. It could be my internet. It could be the fact I'm using Streamlabs, and Streamlabs sometimes, it well, it sometimes scra downright crashes my streams. So we'll have to see how it goes. Let me try one more time to get the flow going. Poisoners. Each one representing a different facet of Oberyn's personality. Okay, so that wasn't playing particularly smoothly, but what seems like a cool little scene took me quite a while. This took me quite a while, but I was quite proud of and it. I also I also leave my intros to last for some reason. Um, get it out of here, all shift X. Next up, the real Tyrion. No, I'm not having it. Array of fighters. So yeah, Oberyn, uh, Obara comes up and then the spears flicked out of her hand. It. Tyene swoops Each in, one representing a different then Oberyn comes down and picks the spear back up. It seems quite simple, but that, that took me a while to make, but like, I think it, it, it looked quite cool in the end. These are the real sand snakes. The real sand snakes. In the background is my coat of arms, FH. They look quite cool. Nobody prefers the show versions, so instead let me know in the comments if you li like the book versions and why. Yeah, this is really laggy, I apologise for that. Um, but yeah, usually in these videos, I'm like, do you, pr you know, like the Bron one, do you prefer the book Bron or the show Bron? And some people like, I prefer the book Bron. Some people like, I prefer Jerome Flynn. He really brings a lot of character to it. In this, I was like, there's no point b being baity with it. There's no point being like, do you prefer the show version? Because no one is going to say that. So I was just like, do you like the book versions? Because some people don't. Some people are like, no, the, the book Sand Snakes suck as well as the show Sand Snakes. Let me know in the chat. Do you, do you like the Sand Snakes? Do you think they were ruined or are you like, I don't care how they are in the show because in the books they weren't interesting in the first place? In season four, Oberyn mentions his eight bastard daughters. His paramour, Ilaria Sand, is the mother of the youngest four. We know the name of four Sand Snakes. We meet Obara, Nymeria and Tyene in season five, but we also hear of one Elia Sand. Yeah, there's, there is, Elia Sand is dropped in season four, which I didn't realise until I started researching this video I was like oh damn I remember this scene I just don't, don't remember them talking about Elias Sand of course Elias Sand we see in in the Winds of Winter sample chapter Lady Lance very fiery very flirty very rebellious um it's cool that they reference her in this scene and they bring up the fact that she is named after uh Oberyn's sister and but the the issue is that of course, Oberyn gets sad around her because, like, I named you after my sister. You remind me of my sister and, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, if you're going to act all morose and sad and around your daughter, of course, she's going to start acting rebellious and so on. Um, she wants to be treated as her as own person, Oberyn, not as the ghost of your sister, you know? According to Oberyn, she's a difficult girl. In King's Landing, he tells Cersei that he named her after his late sister. A name that invokes sad rage, thus presumably creating tension between father and daughter. So basically, this off-screen character is the best written Sand Snake in the entire show. That was a, a cheeky comment, but like, I think it's true, right? Like, I genuinely, that's not, like, it's cheeky, but I don't even think that's wrong. Like, like the, the, the fact that he has a daughter and we know he has a strange relationship with her and it's because of the way he acts around her and he acts that way because of how he named her and the link to Elia and... Like, that's pretty cool. Compare that to Obara who, what do we know? She just gave, like, the spear speech and then she's gruff. And at one point she says, Shut up about mama! It's like, eh. And then Nymeria is... Again, there's all this behind-the-scenes stuff where it's like, Oh, Nymeria is meant to be the shrewd diplomatic one. It's like, we never see that in a show. Uh, outside of the end of season six, where the Queen of Thorns is roasting the Sand Snakes, which appears to be Benioff and Weiss apologising or something. And she's like, oh, you look like an angry little boy. Don't presume to tell me what to do. And then Nymeria's like, forgive my sister, forgive my sister. And is trying to act kind of diplomatic. So I guess in that one scene. But otherwise, Nymeria's just, you know, she's got a whip. <laughs> she's got a whip. Um, and then Tyene is... Probably has a bit more character. She's a bit more kind of immature and flirty and a bit of a mama's girl. And I don't know. No, they all suck. I, well, I'm trying. I'm trying to like 
delve into their characterization, but there's really not much there. Oh, we do have a super chat though. Thank you for the super chat from Stephen Nizek. Did I pronounce that right? Uh, who says, never trust a happy Martel. They are naturally grumpy. That's true. I mean, Duran's, Duran's pretending he's chill, but he's not. He's, he's scheming. Oberyn's always pissed off, but in a smug way. Ariane's pissed off because she thinks she's not going to be Princess of Dawn. Um, Quentin, I don't know if Quentin Martell is grumpy. He's just kind of out of, out of his depth. I think Tristane, hey, Tristane's a happy Martell. He's just chilling. He's betrothed to my cellar, you know. He's just relaxing in the water gardens. I don't think he's that bad. But yeah, the, the Martells, they haven't, they haven't had it easy in the main story. Or Robert's Rebellion. The infamous trio appear in season five. Obara Sand is the eldest daughter. She's an archetypal warrior woman, skilled with a spear and dressed in masculine leather armor. She gives a speech explaining that Oberyn claimed her and took her to court when she was but a child. So yeah, this is the, the speech from the book uh, about, he claimed it, he was like, you're my daughter, you're coming with me. And the mother started crying and he threw a spear down. He's like, okay, choose your weapon. Do you wanna, do you want the weapon of the woman where you're, you're gonna cry to get what you want? Or do you want the weapon of the man? Pick up the spear where you fight and I'll teach you how to fight. And she was like, I'd rather be a spear person. And then they went off and then her mother drank herself to death, which isn't mentioned in this iteration of the speech, but he tossed a spirit. Also, th this, this speech is widely mocked <laughs> because it's really random. She just suddenly starts describing like her backstory to her own sisters who presumably know, <laughs> who presumably know this. Um, unless she's saying it to the captain who's bur buried up to his neck some kind of weird performative thing but again why would she i don't know her feet pointed to her crying mother and told her to choose her weapon she chose the spear and joined Oberyn at court the second born daughter is nymeria sand is nymeria and her whip that is a cool looking whip you can see the um there's like a there's a snake wrapped around it that does look cool according to an interview with the actress nymeria's mother was an eastern noblewoman who died in battle but not before teaching her how to handle her weapon of choice, the whip. <laughs> so yeah, slightly different. She is a, the daughter of a noblewoman, an SOC noblewoman in the books. Is it a Valentine? It's a Valentine noblewoman, I believe. If I can remember my own video, I guess. Um, but yeah, she, as far as we know, she wasn't a warrior and she didn't train her in the way of the whip. Probably because a whip is not a weapon you fight with in battle, uh, believe it or not. You don't go into battle with a whip and hope to live. Um, it's so chill. Like, if she just didn't have a whip, if she just had a sword, it'd be like, fine. But like a whip, come on. What? Same interview claims she's the strategic calculating one. <laughs> I like to think she just says it a lot and they're used to, they're used to it. <laughs> yeah, Obara. Like every time she wants to be dramatic, they're like, yeah, can you pass the sword, Obara? And she was like, when I was a girl. My father, kind of, everyone's like, oh, for fuck's sake, not again. What does that say? Okay. I'm just checking the chat. I, I should be getting a second monitor soon. I'm going to buy a second monitor soon so that I can actually live stream like a normal person. Oh, also, I do apologize for the way I said calculating one. Listen to this. I've never sounded more smug. The whip. The same interview claims she's the strategic calculating one. What's that all about? Strategic calculating one. Mm. Mm. I don't know why I said it like that. Not that we ever see that on screen, but there we go. Unlike her older sister, Obara, she wears flowing dresses. Yeah, so they gave Obara like the sort of brown leather armor and Nymeria, they gave her the kind of um, the yellowish dresses, um, I guess to show she's more more ladylike, no, more noble than Obara, but again, she's still she's still just a warrior woman without much of a personality. So, but I just thought I'd I'd explain every aspect of the of the show snakes, the whip, the whip. <laughs> the same interview claims she's the strategic calculating one. Not that we ever see <laughs> strategic calculating one. Blah. That on screen, but there we go. Unlike her older sister Obara, she wears flowing dresses, but still encapsulates the warrior woman vibe. The youngest of the triad is Tyeen San. Ah, uh, wooga. Okay, you know what? I was wrong. The, the show snakes are better. Is this live stream gonna get 
demonetized for playing that music. No, well, my video hasn't been demonetized, so I think I've got away with it. I don't. Is it free use that music? Is it free use? Let me just play it on a full. Cheekily playing in the background now. Of the triad is Tyeen Sand. Okay, you know what? I was wrong. The the show snakes are better. There's a cheesy, cheesy, lame, cheesy joke right there, but I can resist. Her weapons of choice are two long, poison-tipped daggers. Unlike the brutish Obara and the apparently calculating Nymeria, Tyeen is overconfident and feisty and flirtatious or something. They all have different mothers, and Tyene's mother is Alaria Sand, the bastard paramour of Oberyn. Which, of course, is different. In the um, in the books, Tyene is the daughter of a scepter, but they kind of abandoned the whole scepter's daughter, blonde hair, blue eyes. Instead, she's the eldest of Alaria Sand's children. She still keeps that kind of aptitude for poison, but it's more, I will poison my blade and poison Bronn to troll him and then give him the cure, and th that's it. That's the beginning and end of her poisoning. Oop. Oopsie. She joins him in King's Landing in Season 4, having fun with him in brothels and providing moral support during the fight, which he then loses. Fueled by grief and vengeance, Alaria returns to Dawn and schemes with the Sand Snakes. And of course, um... Perhaps... May more controversial than the Sand Snakes? No, I wouldn't say that. I'd say the Sand Snakes are more behated <laughs> by the average, by the casual audience for just being cringe, right? In terms of show viewers, you could argue maybe they were more pissed off at Alaria. Uh, sorry, book readers. Book readers were more pissed off at Alaria than the Sand Snakes because Sand Snakes were like wasted potential, but Alaria was like, what? You know, why would you take a character? that has like a famous anti, I'm not gonna say famous, but ha but is anti-vengeance and has a speech against revenge and then turn her into like a cold, ruthless, you know, suddenly a sociopath. And it's like, just, just, I don't know. I'd love to ramble and theorize and come up with how I would have done the show, how I would have done Dawn, but surely there was something better than just making Alaria a black-clad villain with three angst angsty warrior women with the same personality spinning around throwing whips everywhere like come on just have Ariane just uh, 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 I don't know have Ariane do the plot for my cellar at the same time as her doing the plot Jamie and Bronn maybe bump into her if you really need them to be in that storyline then it's all resolved but then at the end around's like fire and blood um, Alaria can be there as the voice of anti-vengeance. Maybe she teams up with Ar Ariane. I don't know. I don't know. Yes, Crossfire said they named her Tyene, but she really uh, comes off more like an aged-up Elias Sand. You're right. Yeah, a daughter of Alaria, flirty and feisty. She's basically Elias Sand. And considering they already name-dropped Elias Sand in season four, it kind of maybe she would have been Elias Sand. Like, it would have been, uh, maybe she should have been, rather. It would have been less controversial if they'd been like, you are Elias Sand. Because she fits that vibe perfectly. She looks the part, she acts the part, she's written in that kind of way. She could be a Lady Lance, why not? Um, It's just, you know, it, with Tyene, it's like you're just taking their names. You're just taking their names and then making your own weird little character. I don't know. They are furious at Oberyn's death and Duran's apathy. Alaria believes the Dornish should rise up against the Lannisters, and that Princess Marcella, who was sent to Dawn by... T so yeah, it's... it's. Alaria is taking the role of Ariane Martell, um, but you could have just cut the Sand Snakes and just have Ariane Martell. Uh, uh. Ariane Martell is made for HBO. She's literally handcrafted. She is moulded into being a sexy HBO woman who will fulfil... Nine out of ten quotas. Like, why would you not? Why would you ditch her? Um. Tyrion, as a match for Tristane Martell, should be harmed in retribution. Alaria and the Sand Snakes plot to kidnap Myrcella. Perhaps to kill her. Perhaps to push the Lannisters to invade and force Duran to raise troops in defence. Yeah, they, they they never explicitly state why they're trying to kidnap her, but I assume it was just kidnap her and kill her and be like, oop. Wartime, time for war. 
They are pushed into action when they discover that Jamie Lannister has been smuggled into Dawn to snatch Myrcella himself and take her back to King's Landing. Because the whole Dawn, uh, the whole Jamie Bronn going to Dawn, it was. It felt like a placeholder. It was like we don't want to do Jamie in the Riverlands yet, so we'll send we'll send him to Dawn for a little adventure. And it's like okay, fine. We get to see Dawn through the eyes of characters that we know and like. It kind of makes things easier for us. Like, in concept, fine. But then season six comes along, and it's like, okay, season six is where he's going to have his famous Riverlands arc, right? But then he just stays in King's Landing for most of the season. You're like, are you kidding me? And then he finally goes to the Riverlands for two episodes and does the siege and doesn't do or say any of the cool stuff that happens in the books where... Again, it's too simplistic to say redemption arc, but he becomes more tactical. He uses his, he learns to use his brain more than his hands because because he can't fight anymore. He really becomes a kind of general figure, um, and it's just fun watching him. Uh, you know, it being ruthless but also trying to avoid bloodshed, and and turning away from Cersei and, and that culminates in him burning the note. And we don't know where that will continue. In the Winds of Winter, right? He might f go back to Cersei. That would be annoying. But instead, season six, he, he spends most of his time doing... So you have season five where he goes to Dawn and it's just a silly side adventure. And then season six, he is in King's Landing doing nothing. And then he goes to the Riverlands, but it's more as a kind of, oh, I guess we might as well do the Riverlands plot, huh? And then and, that's, and then he just comes back and he simps for an entire season more. And then the next season, he is in the Long Night and then he simps again. He simps himself to death and it's like, okay. Thanks, Jamie. The real Jamie Lannister. Captain who smuggled Jamie tries to sell this information to Obama. Oh, <laughs> Obama. <laughs> it got, I, tri I tripped myself up with the Obama sand. We finally worked out Obama's last name. Sand. At last. Tries to smuggle this information to Obara, who buries him up to his neck in sand and throws a spear through his head uh, because she's cool and badass. The Why does she throw a spear through his head? Just banter? It's just banter? Why did she do that? <laughs> I don't. I don't get it. I, I is it just? Why is he? I guess. Okay, so I guess he he comes up to her and he's like, "I smuggled Jamie into Dawn." Um. Oh wait, no. He comes up to her like, "Hey, I smuggled someone interesting to Dawn. Pay me and I'll tell you." And she was like, "Fuck you." I don't know why specifically he goes to Obara Sand of all people. I'm going. I'm going to go to Oberyn Martell's, Oberyn Martell's eldest daughter to, <laughs> and to bribe me into telling her who I've smuggled into Dawn. Like, okay, um, and then it's like, no, I'm not going to pay you. I'm going to bury bury you up to your neck and surround you with scorpions. Ah, I'll tell you anything. I'll tell you anything. It was Jamie and Bron. It was Jamie Lannister. And she's like, ah, you've told me now, so I'm going to put a bucket on your head. And then I'm gonna wait for my sisters to come, and then I'm gonna then I'm gonna have the bucket whipped off, and then I'm gonna talk about my backstory, and then I'm gonna throw a spear in your face. It is it's like what? Huh? <laughs> like what? <laughs> okay then. She is trolling. She does do a little trolling. Kidnapping plot unfolds, but Jamie Lannister and Bronn are already there. Book Bronn never actually goes to Dawn, as you can learn in this video. Now that's just shameless. That's just a shameless plug. I'm not having that. That's not acceptable. None of, less of that fantasy haven. How dare you? Can I just say, this video is on like 220k views. This boy blew up. I was not expect. This changed my channel. With this video blowing up, and then the Sand Snakes video also doing well, has basically given me the freedom to be able to work on, like longer videos or videos that will release later on like that's awesome finally i see that video as like my big break really and the colors go so well together not i didn't even like do it on, on purpose but look at the chainmail on bron and then the silver of his sigil and then the kind of silvery blue of real life bron and the green contrasting that that's just a beautiful thumbnail that might be my, my best thumbnail the sand snake video was a bit of a the, the thumbnail for the Sand Snake video kind of messy, right? Because I had to have six whole characters in, but I think it turned out okay. They engage in the greatest fight scene in the history of television. Nymeria with her whip just... <laughs> they are... <laughs> I don't... 
Why did they give her a whip? Give her anything else. Obara has a spear. Tyeen has two daggers. Um, Nymira can have a short sword or something. She's just walking around like holding the... It's like, what are you do? What are you achieving? Surrounded and captured by Duran's household guard, led by Aerio Hota. But not before Tyene nicks Bronn with her poisoned blade. <gasps> Bronn has been poisoned. It is the end for Bronn. The Sand Snacks are locked in a cell opposite Bronn to await Duran's judgement. They're slapping hands, they're slapping faces, they're stripping, it's wild down there. Hell yeah. Tyene starts to toy with Bronn like an animal toying with its food, flirting with him to increase his heart rate and trigger the effects of the poison, the long farewell. She only risks- That part of the video is slightly annoying. Um, whenever I talk about poisons, I throw this fun little clip of- um, The long farewell. From Game of Thrones history and lore, Oberyn talking about poisons. Great video, great voice. Pedro Pascal has a cool voice in that. But it, it has like, <clears throat> for some reason the clip lags and it's nothing to do with this video right now. I noticed it afterwards. Flirting with him after I posted it. To increase his heart rate and trigger the effects of There, there. It like f freezes for a bit. And this is in, in the video like three or four times. And it just freezes at that bit every time. It's kind of annoying. The poison. The long farewell. She only rescues him with an antidote when he tells her she's the most beautiful woman in the world. Ilaria is brought before Duran and Tristane. She does not hide her hateful feelings. She refuses to drink a toast to Tommen. Calls Jamie Kingslayer and Duran spineless. But then she changes her tune. She pledges her allegiance to Duran under threat of death. Live Sand Snake reaction. Let me check the chat quickly. I know the whole meme is that Benioff and Weiss like, only, only, like, weren't even going to do Dawn, but they got persuaded to do it because they were like, you get to have a holiday in Spain. I'm not sure how true that is, but it's kind of funny. Hmm... Exchanges kind words with Jamie and d don't mock me saying tune. Fine then, I'll do it the American way. She changes her tune. Is that better? Changes her tune. There we go. Kisses Marcella goodbye as she leaves Dawn. Tyeen gives a personal. It's kind of messed up that Benioff and Weiss like hired a new Marcella without telling the original Marcella because there was an actress obviously who played Marcella in season one and season two. And she wasn't even told that she'd been recast. So she was like watching season five and there's just Marcella appeared and she was like, oh, that's my character. I guess no one told me. Like, at least a courtesy call being like, hey, we've decided to cast someone else, blah, blah, blah. Like, I get it, right? If you cast someone, if you cast a child actor and you're like, now I need a teenager in the role, she might not be, she might not be, you know, she might be a fine child actor. She might not have grown into it. She might not be a great teenage actor or whatever or maybe she's fine but we're looking for someone else it is kind of weird that they like they just got some they just got someone completely new without telling us like oh like i don't know man did you need to do that did you did you need a new marcella no oh, goodbye to bron telling him that oh. yeah they swapped tommen as well yeah i'm um, uh, he's very young in season one and two um I don't know if the, that actor was told about it, but yeah, and they, the, the guy they 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 recast Tommen with a previous Lannister was it Will, Willem Lannister, murdered by Karl Stark in season three. Shout out to my boy Rob. They were boys. They were boys. They were Lannisters. They were boys. But yeah. That's always fun on a rewatch when you're like, oh, look, it's, Tommen's being shanked by fucking Rickard Carsark in a cell. That's weird. Although he wants a good girl, he needs an inadequate feline. Oh, got him. The line that launched a thousand memes. A substandard cat. I need to put that on a t-shirt. Let's get cynical with it. I deliberately set that up. I knew everyone kept going on about substandard cats. I was like, I'll mix it up a bit. Inadequate feline. If I do this joke again, I, I'm gonna ha I'm gonna be running out of synonyms soon enough. What's another one? Su a subpar puss. No, I can't. I can't say puss or pussy because that kind of defeats the the purpose. A subpar kitty. Mm. A subpar kitty. That that's that's a decent one. 
The kiss proves to be fatal, and Marcella drops down dead, poisoned by the long farewell. Now for the books, specifically the A nice and pretty death. <laughs> she doesn't get half her, fl her face slashed off like in the book. Not that that's killed her, um, but no. We let's recast her with a an older, prettier actress, and let's give her a prettier death with a, with a tiny bit of tiny bit of red dripping out her nose, and then she can go oh, and then faint down in her pink dress, and not get her face fucking sliced in half by an emo Dane. Where was Darkstar? Damn it. We could have get rid of the three sand snakes, replace them with um, Ariane Martel, Aris Okart, because where the fuck was Aris Okart? Like, genuinely, where? Um, and then we can have a, some hot scenes, you know what I'm saying? And then, boom, Darkstar. Just for fun. Like, wouldn't it just be funny if Darkstar was in there? I'm not sure what they would do with him, but... Fourth and the fifth books. The eight sand snakes and the song of ice... Shout out to the... Um... CK3 Game of Thrones music, or oh, CK2 and CK3 uh, Game of Thrones music. Um, the composer is credited in the description. Uh, pretty cool, I, th I thought it would be quite cool to have in the background of some of my videos. Ice and Fire are named. Obara, Nymeria, Tyene, and Sorella have different mothers, while Elia, Obella, Doria, and Loreza are the daughters of Ilaria Sand. As in the sh- Ooh, the crew. Show the eldest three are the main focus. All want to avenge Oberyn's death at the hand. Okay, what is go okay? It looks like people with um terrible kitten, Unf <laughs> unfortunate kitten, um <laughs> second rate lioness. That's a stretch. A, cra a crappy cougar. A crappy cougar. That's just Melisandre, isn't it? <laughs> if they had put Ariane in Game of Thrones, I would have gone into acting and auditioned for the role of Arizokar so hard. You need to behave yourself. Crossfire. Calm down, have a cold shower, behave yourself. Who would... I'll tell you what a good stream would be. Oh, you just gave me... Because I was thinking, who would... Who could play a good Ariane Martel? And then I thought... Game of Thrones fan casting. That could be fun to think about. That could be a live stream. What do you think? Me and Quinn the GM, fan casting Game of Thrones. Let's say we're remaking Game of Thrones from scratch. Um, we have to cast all the characters again with fresh actors. That could be really fun. Or maybe a stream where we cast the characters who were never... We fan cast the characters who were never actually in the show, like young Griff and Ariane and so on. Hands of the Mountain, but in different ways. Rather than being three discount Xena warrior princesses, each sand snake represents a different aspect of their father. Obara is the most similar to her show counterpart, representing the martial side of Oberyn. She's a big-boned, spear-wielding warrior who prefers masculine clothing, and the daughter of an old town prostitute. Hey, there we go. Her speech in the show is taken from the books. She chose Oberyn over her mother. <gasps> and who's that in the background, if not a cheeky Patreon cameo, one of my... Uh, Lord of Light patrons, uh, dev call, part of the reward for that that tier that pledge is that they get to their special characters get to cameo in the videos. So there's dev call as uh, he wanted his character to be a a, a brotherhood version of Thoros of Mir, the kind of the poet you know when he's thinner and more raggedy, and there he is getting drunk in the back of the brothel. Who drank herself to death a year later. The Marshal Obara wants to avenge her father by raising an army and sacking Old Town, while her younger sister Nymeria will take King's Landing. Duran, of course, rejects this. <laughs> I already had a Duran character, but I was like, I can't just have him standing there, so I designed a little wheelchair for him. He looks kind of cute. Also, this video is like lagging and not lagging, but like st stuttering a little bit, you know? Is that just because of Streamlabs slowing my PC down or. That's not the video, is it? Because I'm sure when I watched this video, it wasn't acting like that. So, I hope not. <laughs> Zendaya as Ariane. No, no, no. Zendaya as Ariane. Uh, Tom Holland as Arisoka. <laughs> uh, Brian Blessed as Bobby B, yes, yes.
play Nymeria is the beautiful Henry Cavill as Waldef Waldefrey, that could be a fun one. Oh, willowy and graceful daughter of a volunteer noblewoman. She represents the cunning and sexual side of her father. In fact, she was abed with both of the female Fowler twins when last seen abed. Let me address this. Someone in the comments was like, just because a noblewoman was abed with two other noblewomen doesn't mean that there's anything inherently sexual going on. You know, medieval times, it was cold. Women was, would often sleep in beds with their maids, you know, bed warmers. Um, come on, though. It's, the implication is very clearly that Nymeria is sleeping with a couple of sexy twins. Like, that's, that's the implication. It's not that they're bed warmers. Come on. I, d I didn't know how to animate this bit, so I, was, I just had them, like, had her, like, pulling them towards her. When news came. <laughs> Timothy Chalamet as John. <laughs> no. Honestly, what could be funny, recasting uh, Harry Collette as John. Because... That that bit in the trailer where Harry Collette is walking on the wall. Now that is Jon Snow right there. Aim of Oberyn's death. To avenge him, she offers to carry out a series of assassinations with her sister, Tyene. The victims would be Tywin, Cersei, Jaime, and Tommen. I need to redesign my Cersei. That's a very old Cersei design and I don't like it. But I still can't, I haven't yet been bothered to redo it, so. She is also rejected by Duran. Tyene is the blonde, blue-eyed daughter of a scepter. Despite her innocent persona, she shares- <laughs> the little blink. See, what I need to do is, is again, I, I, YouTube has spent like a month on a video, right? And then it blows up and they can live off of that. With me, sometimes I'm, I'm until very recently, I've been just trying to do a video a week or every two weeks. So I don't have time for all the little details, but I really, the stuff like the blinking, is the blonde, blue-eyed daughter of a scepter. Get Despite that. her innocent persona... Like, I want to do more of that stuff. I want to do more, like, each character having various different expressions and I put them all together so that it looks like they're properly looking around, blinking, you know, where it feels more alive. I, I, I've, I think I've got a bit more time now to make the videos feel more alive. Jennifer Lope Lopez as Ariane. These, uh, these are all meme suggestions. Come on. I'm not sure who would play Ariane, because um, everyone's thinking Hollywood actors, and Hollywood casts a very specific kind of woman in their role, visually. And that's usually, you know, a slender woman um, between the ages of, like, 20 and 35. Uh, Ariane is, like, short and curvy, and short and curvy women aren't usually cast in Hollywood. Hollywood's still kind of stuck in the age of the 90s model in terms of um, how it casts women. Men is like all over the place. You can kind of look like anything if you're a man. It helps to be good looking and medium height. Um, but there's a bit less, a uh, bit less discrimination in terms of body type with men in movies. She shares Oberyn's aptitude for poisons. She wants to avenge her father by crowning Myrcella to provoke the Lannisters and Tyrells into invading Dawn, where they would be crushed. Again, Duran rejects her. It's worth mentioning the fourth and most mysterious sand snake, Sorella. Hey, it's Sorella. The daughter of a Summer Islander captain. She is I ran out of time to draw the Summer Islander captain, um, which is a shame. She's not currently in Dawn. On an unrelated note, there's an acolyte of the Citadel called Alaras the Sphinx. Oh, Alaras the Sphinx. Okay, well, that's not relevant to the video, so why did I even bring that up? That was a bit silly, wasn't it? I don't know why I did that. That's the equivalent of me being like, oh yeah, there's a sand snake called Tyene. By the way, Jon Snow's in the north. Come on. It's not relevant. Who is this Alarasa Sphinx? Um, so yes, of course, obviously, I took the same model as... Um, uh, where is it? As Sorella. Where? Come on. It's worth mentioning the fourth and most mysterious sand snake, Sorella. That's why my video stays so fucking long, because things are moving every second. The background, the characters. I, I've really chosen a form of video where things have to constantly move. I can't let things linger. It's like, ah. So yeah, there's Sorella. So I took Sorella's sort of a summer island model. Captain. She is not currently in Dawn. And then I'll skip forward. Dawnish and and then I, um, so I think same hair and face. Um, 
but I gave a kind of arched eyebrow to show some inquisitiveness, maybe a bit of assertiveness, and then uh, uh, an outfit, a um, just a kind of generic, like a generic a man's outfit. So of course that gets rid of the curves there, looks more masculine. And there's a little, uh, there are some chains around her neck. Not much because she's, you know, she's an acolyte. She's not a proper mace or anything. But there, I've got three. I, there probably should be more than three, but she's got three chains around her neck. That's pretty cool. Um, and there are a few other cameos in this specific part of the video. A citadel called Alarasta. So in the back, I'll remove the subtitles for now. In the background, we can see Lazy Leo Tyrell there, who um famous for his little douchey flop. Um, sort of douchey frat boy. He's the kind of guy. He's like. He's not in the main Tyrell line. He's like a cousin, right? He's like... He's like... Um, Mace's cousin's son. Or Mace's cousin. Or something like that. He's not one of the main ones. He's not going to inherit any land. But he's still kind of rich. And he's a he's a layabout. You know, he hasn't really got much to do. Oh, I guess I'll become a Maester. But he just stays around in university. He stays around in college. He's not really paying attention. He's not going to pass anything, but he'll just retake the year. Uh, he just gets to party all the time and go clubbing. And be racist, because he's very racist against Alaras. You know, calling her a monkey and so on. He's just a douchey guy. He's just like a douchey racist frat boy who uh, is using his his daddy's money to um, have fun instead of learning anything. And we have another cameo here. We have a, a balding gentleman with a book that says Storm's End, Nuclear Safety and Mechanical Integrity. Little Preston Jacobs cameo, Maester Preston. This is an old um, Preston Jacobs Maester design. It's like in one of my earliest videos. And when I was making this, I was like, okay, I need some characters in the background to make Old Town feel a bit more alive. So I'll have Lazy Leo. Um, oh, yeah, Maester Preston. Um, and, of course, another Patreon cameo. That's my Patreon Cole Shot. Um, that's his special character design. I based it off of a character he created in CK3 uh, in the yeah Crusader Kings 3. And I have one version of him in armour, but for this, like, he's just kind of chilling there with a fun little outfit. Let me check the chat. Um, some more fan casts going on. Let me have a look. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> have thought as the Eerie. <laughs> the guy who plays the mountain as the Eerie. Why not? It makes bronze, oh, impregnate the bitch line feel a bit weirder. Not gonna lie. We were robbed of Thick Queen Rhaenyra by HBO. Yeah, that's just kind of the done thing in TV and movies. Bryce Dallas Howard as Catelyn. As an older Catelyn, yeah. As in older than book Catelyn. Um, but still younger than Michelle Fairley. Right. Yes, Bryce, ha Bryce Dallas Howard has the look. She has the red <laughs> the redhead mummy look. Uh, yeah, I'm, can she do an English accent? I'm not sure. Probably. Um, the Friendless Norseman poisoned me, mummy. Was that when Ty, um, Tyne was on screen? Because you need to be behave yourself. Come on, man. Put yourself together. They're big-eyed cartoons. Um, <laughs> Kevin Hart as Salador San. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Okay, let's continue. Leo's father is Mace's uncle. Yes, I remember, because... Yeah, yeah, you're right. He's Mace's cousin then. Because, um, yeah, Mace... Mace has three uncles. There's Garth the Gross, who's the steward, the high steward of High Garden. There's... Um, Maester Gorman, who, an Archmaester Gorman, or like he's an acting Archmaester. And there are theories that Gorman will become the Grand Maester and then the Tyrells will have their fingers in more political pies, right, in King's Landing. They'll have more influence in the council and so on. And then there's another one who, I can't remember his name, but he's one of Ace's, Mace's uncles that's uh, like the captain of the Old Town Guard. And then his son is Leo, although Leo is like meant to be like in his late teens or early 20s. So Mace's uncle must have had him very, very late for some reason. But maybe he, like, remarried and 
get excited, and boom, new child. Or maybe it's not actually his son, but... Play. Play. He's not playing. Sphinx. Yes, he's half Dornish and half some Islander. Yes, he has Oberyn's Widow's Peak and intellect. Yes, I also gave her the, the Widow's Peak coming in. It's not particularly noticeable, but... Yes, his name happens to be Sorella Backwards, but that's just a coincidence. What are you, some kind of conspiracy theorist? The fifth... Yeah, what are you? You crazy? Are you crazy or something? Shout out to Order of the Green Hand, my, bo my boys Order of the Green Hand, thinking that Sorella and Alaris are separate people. <laughs> Despite having the same name backwards, they're different people. No, Shay is actually Sorella. Sorella's missing because she's say Shay. It makes perfect sense, don't question it. Thank you for the super chat from Canadian Boy Cole. Sup, it's Beggar King here to do what I do. Thank you for the super chat, Beggar King. Uh, Beggar King is a great patron of mine uh, who recently, and I am slightly ashamed of this, uh, recently sent me like a hundred Canadian dollars to send a picture of myself on the Patreon Discord drinking Canadian maple syrup. Um, you can react to that however you want. If that makes you want to leave the live stream, you can. If that makes you want to subscribe, you can. You know, I am... You know, we're talking about old town prostitutes. I'm basically a prostitute at this point for my patrons. I'm getting paid to drink maple syrup. I don't know why the why Canadian boy Cole was interested in me drinking syrup. I don't know if it's a, a meme thing, if it's a fetish thing. I don't know. But either way, I drank that syrup for you and it was sweet. My God, it was sweet. Oh, I'm not used to syrup. I'm not a sugary, syrupy boy. You know, I'm not used to it. Um, But yeah. Thank you for the super chat, you lunatic. You absolute lunatic. Okay, what else, what else, what else are people saying? When I get the two monitors, this is going to be so much smoother. Uh, okay. This is Elia Sand, the eldest daughter of Ilaria Sand, also known as Lady Lance due to her fondness for jousting. She inhabits the wildness of her father's personality. To appease the Iron Throne, Duran has his rebellious bastard nieces arrested. Obara, Nymeria, and Tyene are- So this tower looks really cool. This tower is actually on my House Dane video. Um, so let me Duran let me try and pause before the tower comes up. Arrested. Oh, I'm going to put the subtitles back on, on the video as well. Um, but yes, so originally the, uh, the tops of the tower that are kind of bronzy, they're purple. And these sigils were the House Dane sigil, because on Patreon I have an exclusive video called The History of House Dane, which I did ages ago. And this was meant to be the, um, uh, this was meant to be Starfall. This was meant to be that, the, the Dane Tower. And I was like, oh, I need a Dornish Tower for this bit. Oh, boom, I'll just make it, I'll just turn it into a Martell Tower. Reusing assets. Uh, come on. Streamlabs really, really makes... My stuff a bit laggy. I need to sort some stuff out. Obara, Nymeria, and Tyene. I was talking to some people who were disgusted. They were shocked at the fact that I um <laughs> that I don't have a that I don't have an SSD connected to my. They were like, "You're a YouTuber. You're not using an SSD. What's wrong with you?" I will. I will do. I will do. Are locked up in the Spear Tower. While Elia, Obella, Loria, and Loreza are detained in the water gardens with their mother. Prince Duran, goofy ass names, daughter, Ariane Martel, is inspired by Tyene and launches her own doomed plot to crown Myacella. Ariane, this is my second Ariane design. I had a previous Ariane who, there was something off about the way she looked, so I redesigned her. I'm still not 100% happy. I still can't get her right, but I think she looks pretty Ariane, for what it's worth. Uh, thank you for the, <laughs> what the fuck? Thank you for the super chat from Canadian boy Cole, who sent me $69. Very nice. And he loved it. He drank all of it. I didn't fucking drink all of the syrup. I had some of it and it was too sweet. Um, I don't even know what I'm going to use it for. Time to get me some pancakes, I guess. Um, ugh. This man sent me 69 Canadian dollars. Where have you got the money? What, what do you do for a living? Are you the new Andre? No. Uh, Andre, there, there is no new Andre. Andre is Andre. 
you're not you're never gonna no one's ever gonna beat andre popping in like once every three months to donate a hundred bucks and then disappear he, he's a he, he's a myth he's a legend um but yeah seriously thank you very much uh beggar king of canada you're amazing uh, you're supporting the channel a lot and for anyone else feel free to send super chats or as i said in the start of this stream there's a link in the description to streamlabs uh, if you donate via streamlabs then that means i receive 100 percent of what you send me um and youtube doesn't take a chunk of it because that money canadian boy cole sent very grateful but youtube's going to take like 40 percent of that or something uh which is just annoying but they you know they they have a monopoly on this stuff so of course they can afford to do that um Shall we continue? Army, you're in the army. Yes, you're in the cadets. Yes, of course you are. I don't know. Yeah. Like, Canadian cadets be paying well. Um, oh, whoops. Anne grew up with the Sand Snakes. She played with Nymeria, travelled with Sorella, danced with Tyene. In fact, she's closest to Tyene. I love I love throwing in the little <laughs> the dance animations where they go, hmm, hmm. I had one in my... Uh, Range of Castamere video. I enjoy that stuff. Bring men with her. Yeah, that's Andre Dolt, apparently. Um, her first experience in... Ariane's first experience in bed was her and Tyene having a threesome with Sir Andre Dolt, who finished prematurely. Um, which, of course, I was not going to animate, but I thought I'd just have him looking, looking pleased in between the lasses. And once even attempting to flee with her to Highgarden to marry Willis Tyrell. Oberyn stopped them, of course. Meanwhile, Alarus earns a copper link in his chain, which represents the study of history. Archmaester Marwyn of the Higher Mysteries tasks her with looking after- Oh yeah, my Archmaester Marwyn. <laughs> I, I didn't have- this was a new one I drew, I didn't have him before. I don't know why I've made him look so deformed, but I kind of like it. There's- there's the boy. There's Marwyn. The Mad Mage. Um, what? We need Salma Hayek as Ariane. Salma Hayek's like 55. I'm not sure if she's right for Ariane, bro. Unless you mean prime Salma Hayek. <coughs> Excuse me. Salma Hayek is like insanely hot considering her age. She has aged like fine wine. She's still a massive crush of mine, but she's not right for Ariane. Or Sophia Vergara. Um, again, too old, but... Yeah. Salma Hayek, Sophia Vergara. I see you're a man of taste. Um, yeah, Henry Cavill was Mace Tyrell. Very nice. Why not? Let's... Okay, let's continue. The Sam Tarly in Old Town. After Ariane's plot is foiled, the Sand Snakes are eventually released. Obara. I love that sound. I use that so often. Just the ching sound of the gates coming over. Oh, it's the one and only Darkstar, everyone. Sent to hunt down the rogue knight Darkstar after he wounded Princess Marcella. While Nymeria and Tyene are sent to King's Landing. The former to join the small council. Whew. Actually, let me... So, yeah, so... Um... Each of the Sand Snakes are sent off on different quests by the end of the book. So Obara Down the is going to hunt Dark Star after he Big D himself, Darkstar. Uh, this is an old drawing of Darkstar from my House Dane video. I quite like. <laughs> He's got the black streak through his hair. Um, yeah, she's going off with Sir Balon Swan of the Kingsguard and Aerio Hotar. So through Aerio's POV, the camera that rides, we're probably going to find out how this battle is going down and hopefully why it's going down and why we need to learn about this when there are so many important characters and so many important things happening. Why do we care about people fighting Darkstar? Like, I don't get it, but let's see. Hopefully, let's see. Princess Marcella, while Nymeria and Tyene are sent to King's Landing, the former to join the... Yeah, so Nymeria is joining the small council in Duran's um, absence, because obviously he doesn't want to travel due to his gout. So that'll be fun. It'll be fun to see the... The new small council formed by the late regent, Kevin Lannister, pour one out, rest in peace. And with Nymeria being there as as well, presumably presumably sowing some kind of chaos, right? When the when Dawn decides to side with Aegon, Nymeria's probably gonna sow some chaos. Maybe she'll be yet another thing prodding at Cersei's fragile mental state, driving her nuts. 
And on the small counter, we have Mace Tyrell, who is the new Hand of the King, uh, who has his own oaken th- hand, o- oaken throne carved into a hand, um, because he's a pompous buffoon. Uh, on the left, we have Paxter Redwine, uh, who is Master of Ship, Master of Ships. And on the right, we have Randall Tarly. I'm I'm not actually a fan of that Randall Tarly. I, I might redesign him. There's something off about him. It doesn't feel Randall Tarly-ish enough to me. And he's the Master of Laws. Small Council, the latter to disguise herself as a scepter. <gasps> She's a scepter. My goodness. She's sneaking into the Faith of the Seven. Oh, and then for um, for uh, Tyene's mother, where is she? Tyne's mother, I I reused my Scepter Lamour drawing, but I gave her blue eyes. Um, she is stacked, what the hell? Alright, where were we? Uh, boop, we here? Obara yeah. is sent to hunt down the rogue knight Darkstar after he wounded some... <sighs> Tess Marcella, while Nymeria and Tyene are sent to King's Landing, the former to join the small council, the latter to disguise herself as a scepter and gain the confidence of the High Sparrow. There he is. The char- I will be curious to see what she gets up to. Um, I wonder if how much of it is planned and how much is George just throwing stuff out like, uh, you're gonna go there, you're gonna go there, and you're gonna go there. Cool, let's see what chaos unfolds. Just throw more chaotic elements into King's Landing and see what happens. The character of Ilaria Sand is worth noting. She does not inspire or collude with the Sand Snakes. When the Mountain Skull is delivered to Sun... <laughs> um, th- the Skull. You know what was fun? I've got a few fun things to say. So first off, it was interesting when, like... Those, uh... There was... Uh, no, was it Cushing Library stuff? I can't remember, but there were some drafts, some notes about Feast, uh, feast for Crows very early, like 2003, kind of, 2004, um, maybe earlier, um, th- those notes were found in uh, somewhere and were released on Reddit. And one of them had, like, the mountain skull on it, but it was, like, mountain skull, and in brackets it said, like, missing teeth. Um, so clearly he always planned a skull to be delivered, but there's something about missing teeth. So it could be the skull is missing teeth, and they're like, hold on, the mountain didn't miss any of his teeth. Or maybe the, it's probably the other way around, right? His original plan was the skull arrives and they're like, the skull has all his teeth. We know for a fact the mountain has lost a tooth or something like that. So it can't be him. Um, but that that didn't end up in the book. But yeah, the gentleman who is dropping this heavy skull is another, another one of my patrons, Alex the Pagan. Um Lord of Light here, so he gets the cameo, and this is his first cameo, so I was like, you can just swoop in and just dump a, <laughs> dump a skull on the table. You know, th- it, nothing says in my, in the Lord of Light pledge that I'm gonna draw you as a knight, it's just that everyone who goes for it is like, please draw me as a knight, I'm like, fine, you're a knight, and there's another... She does not inspire or collude with the Sand Snakes. When the there's another patron here, Caden, also a knight, of course. Look at that little fishy. Skull is delivered to Sunspear. She speaks out against the lust for violent revenge. Where does it end, she asks. After all, Tywin, Amory Lorch, Gregor Clegane, the men behind Elia Martell's murder, they are all dead. Rest in peace. She rejects the destructiveness of revenge that permeates A Song of Ice and Fire. Unlike the bitter Ilaria of the show, which brings us back to... <laughs> Duran's the worst uncle he sent his niece to bang the High Sparrow. I don't think that's what Tyne's getting up to. <laughs> I hope not. I don't need that scene. Uh, let me just check the chat for a second. Every time you make a video about a family or characters, I'm convinced you can finish Winter Winter. I mean, I've done so much research for my videos. I'm discovering stuff that I I didn't I don't even remember reading, and I'm like, oh shit. Um, I'm slowly becoming a, a lore expert, slowly but surely. <clears throat> okay, uh let's continue. To season six and seven of Keeping Up with the Sandashians. Duran's actor Alexander Sitter. That's so cheesy, keeping up with the Sandashians. 
I was like, people are going to love that joke. And like, no one has referenced it in the comments. I was like, okay, maybe that one didn't land as well as substandard cat. But there we go. Edig stated that he was contracted for four episodes of season six, and yet he died in the first. Clearly, the negative backlash to season five's dawn plot caused some last minute changes, hopefully for the better. And weak men will never rule Dorne again. Oh, God damn it! With my okay, let's oh. Didn't I didn't accidentally minimize the video? Um. Okay, let's discuss this then. So this is so intriguing to me. So I was letting the video play for a little bit there. Um, this is so intriguing to me that Alexander Siddig, great actor, he gets four scripts for season six. And then he gets a call from Benioff and Weiss saying, hey, my man, sorry. And this is what they said. Apparently they said, we were going to kill you in the season five finale, but we decided to delay it to the season six premiere. That's why you didn't die in the finale. And he was like, okay, but that doesn't make any sense because I'm, my contract is for four episodes a season. So what was I, was I going to die in episode one and be a corpse for three episodes? So it sounds like they just fucking lied to him, which is kind of scummy. That originally their plan was to have him in four episodes and then the backlash was bad. And they were like, okay, let's, whatever their plan was for Dawn, we're going to scrap it. Just wrap it up in the first episode, bring them in the last episode, but but ditch it. Ditch it. Um, and I'm curious, what was their plan? What was their plan for Dawn in season six before the backlash? Because four episodes for Duran, what does that mean? Does that mean... Was it going to be the, the episode one coup over the span of four episodes right where where they're they're planning to over overthrow duran and they're getting people on their side and blah 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 and then it ends in him being assassinated in like the fourth episode of his contract and then that, like that's the finale uh, or was it going to be that duran would take the same role as book duran where he's like you know where he's pretending to be He's pretending to be kind of useless. He's sitting there. He just wants peace. He's he's trying to put the past behind him. He wants to progress. But actually, he's like, no, I'm holding on. I'm holding on to my grudges. I'm just being slow and careful and gentle with it. And then you have that bit in the book where he's like, I want vengeance, justice, fire and blood. Were they going to have that moment where the Sand Snakes are arrested? And, and Duran's like, listen. Similar to Ariane, right? He's like, listen, I'm not going to punish you. I want you on my side because I agree we need to provoke a war. I just didn't want to do it this early. But now is the time. Let's side with Daenerys. So, yeah. Either they were going to do a coup but stretch it out over four episodes or they were going to try and replicate the book somewhat. Um, but then when there was backlash, they went, okay, let's just cut the plot. Let's cut a bunch of the characters. We don't need Tristane. We don't need... Uh, Duran, we don't need Aereo, just keep the Sand Snakes for later. Which is bizarre because the Sand Snakes were the ones that people didn't like. So if you were gonna wreck on it, why not be like Duran captures them all and kills them all and then goes and then is like, Okay, Aereo Hotar. They were idiots because we we couldn't strike now, we had to strike later, and we will side with House Daenerys and uh, they will side with Daenerys and then Dawn sides with her and maybe he sends a letter Like, what was their plan for Tristane in King's Landing? What was their plan? What Was he meant to be, like, part of... Because King's Landing in Season 6, it's lots of filler. People praise Season 6, but it feels so fillery. And I wonder if Tristane was meant to be in there, like, interacting, and then they were like, just scrap, screw it, scrap Dawn. I don't get it. I really don't get it. Um, but let me know in the chat, what are your theories? What was the original plan for Dawn in Season 6? Where Duran was meant to be in for four entire episodes. What was the plan there? Okay. Let's continue the video while your thoughts come in. Marcella dead. Alaria and the Sand Snakes <laughs> enact their meticulously planned coup. Let me go Al back a bit. I like the little... Dead. And weak men will never rule Dorne again. Oh, God damn it! With Marcella dead, 
Alaria and the Sand Snakes enact their meticulously planned coup. Alaria plunges her blade into Duran's heart, while Tyene, whose hair has grown remarkably in the span of a few days. Yeah, what, what's that all about? <laughs> Why did Tyene's hair grow out so much? Like, this is literally like days, maybe days after Jamie left Dawn, like a week. And it's like her hair's grown out all luscious. It's like, huh? Do we prefer short hair Tyene or long hair Tyene? Not long hair, but like mid hair, shoulder length. I think the actress pulls off both. She looks good with both. Why are people talking about Russia in the chat? God damn it. <laughs> There's a, a song of a Ice and Fire live stream about the Sand Snakes, people talking about Russian geography. It's about how the North is comparable to Russia. Okay, I'll have to read that another time. Shanks Aereo Hotel with a letter opener and no scopes the fleeing maester. The oh, the for area. Uh, why, why was their solution to the controversy to kill Duran, who no one had a problem with, and is played by a great actor, not just a great actor, but like a nerd culture actor. He's from Deep Space Nine. People like him and were happy about him being casted. Why would you kill Aereo Hotar, who's this big, imposing, cool guy with a big axe? He's got no personality. He just looks cool. He looks cool and he acts cool, and it's like, brilliant. Badass. And then Tristane, who's this, you know, good-looking, charismatic young lad, what's he going to get up to in King's Landing? And they're just like, let's kill them all. <laughs> Why? Especially, like, the tiny dagger stabbing Aereo in the back, and he just goes... Mm! and falls and like tumbles over onto his face like a tree just immediately dies it's so strange i remember watching this i specific because this is the first season i watched live i started reading the books in the summer between season five and season six and i hadn't watched game of thrones before i read the books first i'm that kind of guy i'm annoying i have to read the books first and then i binged after i finished the books i said i binged season one to five and I remember watching season six live, and obviously, it comes out. Was it nine p.m., ten p.m. in America, depending on the part of America? In the UK, Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon, it comes out at two a.m. on Monday, and it also comes out again like nine in the evening. But I like to stay up late, so I was staying up late on on the Monday, um, two a.m. Maybe I had some hot chocolate or something, and I was sitting in my room, and I was like, "Oh, let's go!" And then just this scene. I just remember being baffled. I, 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 that was when I was coping as a fan. That that's I was still in the kind of it's fine. They're allowed to make changes. You know, it's going to be good. Uh, season five was a misstep. Like I wasn't seeing the the danger ahead. I was like trying to excuse everything. Um, it's only really with season seven that I kind of gave up and went okay. Yeah, it's kind of ruined beyond repair. But from now on, just treat the show as like a popcorn flick that you can have fun with with your mates. You know. Yeah, let's continue. Guards glare angrily and do nothing to help the prince who they previously worked for to stop the Sand Snake's previous plan because they're uh, they're angry, they're mad at him. I, d I don't know what's going on. No, that's also insane. Every single guard, every single guard just lets the coup happen because they hate Duran, but they were literally working with Duran and Aereo to capture the Sand Snakes previously. It's so lame. Meanwhile, Obara and Nymeria are dispatched to assassinate Tristane before he reaches King's Landing. They give him an offer of who to fight, and naturally he picks the woman with the whip. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, sure, oh, um... Oh, oh, there's a... My cousins. One of them has a big old spear, the other one's holding a whip, and they want to fight me and I have a sword. I think I'll take the whip. And then he, like, puts himself between them, and it's like, dude, just get the fuck out of there. Just, ru just run out the room. Just, just leg it. What was her plan? Fortunately for her, Obara steps in and stabs Tristane through the back of the head, mirroring the Martel sigil. A spear through the sun, get it? Yeah, very nice. It's funny that people... Very, I do I do wonder if that's something from the books, whether... Because Quentin's dead. Preston. Quentin is dead. So I wonder if Tristane's going to get a spear through the head to mirror the sigil, whether that's a book thing or whether it was just Benioff from Weiss being cute. Like, oh, sigil through the sun, let's do sigil through the head, like the... Like the a spear through the head, sorry, spear through the sun. Excuse me, um, I need some water. Sorry. Oh, chaos! Two weeks I've gone rusty. No one likes a no one likes a rusty stream. 
Laria's characterization, as well as the poorly written and awkwardly acted Sand Snakes, and yet the response was to make Alaria even more horrible, the Sand Snakes even more annoying. Shut up about mama! <laughs> that is funny. And to kill off the three characters that people didn't even have a problem with. Yeah, I'm, I know I've already rambled about this, so I'm not going to do it again, but on top of killing the wrong people and saving the wrong people, it's like, let's make the Sand Snakes just annoying. Like the scene where they're just like, shut up about mama, and they just start shouting mama at each other. It's like, D what? Stop. But yeah, when Hot D comes out, your boy's going to be up at 2am for that shit. I'm going to be up at 2am, hot chocolate in my hand, whipped cream, marshmallows, getting ready to, I don't know. Uh, Quinn, the GM, has talked about like having post-episode live streams. If so, I'm willing to stay up. <laughs> I'm going to be tired, but I'm very excited. It's going to be a roller coaster. Those eight weeks of Hot D are going to be a roller coaster. Um. Anyway, the girl bosses take over Dawn somehow and secure an alliance with Daenerys Targaryen. Along with Varys, they persuade Olena Tyrell to join their cause, but not before she absolutely roasts them. In season six, Alaria Sand attends Daenerys' war. Yeah, the whole Oba um, sorry, the whole Olena roasting the Sand Snakes felt very like um. Yeah, we're sorry. Uh, let's have a cool character and insult them, so you know that we're in on the joke. We're laughing at the Sand Snakes with you. It was all intentional. Um, yeah. War Council representing Dawn. Presumably, she's the princess of Dawn now, but it's never actually stated. Anyway, the vengeful Alaria insults Tyrion and argues in favour of Danny attacking King's Landing immediately. Instead, the Martell and Tyrell forces are sent to besiege the city, transported by Yara Greyjoy's iron. Finding out that Florence Pugh's brother was crazy. Who? What? Who's Florence Pugh's brother? Fleet. Alaria and the Sand Snakes. Wait, let me go back a bit. Is there someone who comes even closer presenting the books and making predictions like Haven? Oh, well, thank you. Well, thank you. Stop it. Don't stop it. Keep going. Um, there are a load of great Song of Ice and Fire channels out there. I'm the only one who does, like, animation. That's my niche. It's, like, animated fantasy stuff. Uh, there are a load of great channels out there, including channels that are Better than mine, honestly, but... Um, okay, we've gone back a little bit. Anyway, the vengeful Alaria insults Tyrion and argues in favour of Danny attacking King's Landing immediately. Instead, the Martell and Tyrell forces are sent to besiege the city, transported by Yara Greyjoy's Iron Fleet. Alaria... Yeah, someone's saying I've got lag with the chat. Yeah, I definitely do. Um, I've definitely got... I don't think I'm... Um... Yeah, that's the one. That's that is the one issue with my live streams is that sometimes I'm like a solid. The chat's like a solid fifteen seconds behind what I say when it comes in when I see it, so it can be a bit. The back and forth can be a bit awkward. Tristane, wait, what? Tristane Martel is Florence Pugh's brother. What? Really? What the fuck? How? Why? I mean, I don't mean how, I mean like, okay, that's not like, they look nothing like each other, what? Are they like half-siblings? I assume they're half-siblings, right? Damn, that's a, ra that's a random connection I was not expecting, okay, fair enough. I miss Tristan, he was a cool, he was a good actor, he looked cool, would have been fun to see Dawn represented in King's Landing. It's, uh, yeah, why are they gonna do him like that? and the Sand Snakes travel on Yara's ship. Obara and Nymeria mock Tyene, while Alaria and Yara Greyjoy nearly redeem the entire Dornish plot. Hey now. Hey now, that's inappropriate. That's not appropriate, Haven. Come on. But they're interrupted by Yoran Greyjoy and his fleet. Obara and Nymeria take on the Crow's Eye himself. The Ironborn King disarms Obara, breaks her spear in half, and impales her with them. Now and here we have the kind of fetishy revenge killing <laughs> as another... Sorry for making the Sand Snakes, we're going to have them be brutally murdered by Euron. Miria's prowess with a whip isn't enough to defeat him either, and Euron strangles her to death. Alar I, I, 
again, it was like a fun kind of pulpy, you know, kill the hateable characters. But like, why is, why is Nymeria whipping him? Like, for fuck's sake, put the whip down, woman. She's just like, whoosh. it's like, what are you, you're not achieving anything. Just, just attack him with a normal weapon. And then he like pulls her in with the whip and then strangles her with it. Like, you're just as bad you're on. Just cut her head off. You have an axe. Come on. Daria and Tyene are captured. Yeah, if I ever do a real Euron Greyjoy, it's going to have to be a big one. But I'm specifically going for smaller characters, side characters, because they're quicker to do. And like I said, my channel's in that phase where it's kind of making short, quick videos to keep afloat. But I think I'm gradually getting... I'm transitioning into being able to make longer, slightly less frequent, but longer, more detailed videos. Because um, something like Euron, I don't want that to be like a cute little 10 minute video like this one. I want Euron to be like a big, a big video. They're paraded through the streets of King's Landing by Euron and thrown into the black cells of the Red Keep. Cersei devises a cruelly ironic revenge. This is actually a good scene. This is a good season seven scene, in my opinion. Giving a poisonous kiss to Tyene and pledging to keep Ilaria alive to watch her daughter decompose before her eyes. It kind of goes hard. Yeah, I like it. I think it's a fitting end for the show characters. Uh, Tyene is a poisoner, she gets poisoned. Um, Ilaria wanted to get revenge by killing Cersei's daughter who's innocent. He's like, boom, well, she's going to kill your daughter and you get to watch her decompose. It's one of those things where it's about leaving it to your imagination, therefore it's more ho horrifying, right? Like, having the mountain murder them or having them tortured or beheaded, like... Sure, but then, but when you basically say, you know, the only mark I'm leaving on you are, uh, you know, my poison lipstick. Like, I'm just going to kiss you and walk away, and then as the audience, you picture what happens. You picture Tyene dying a few days later, or, or maybe a few hours later, and then you picture her just, like, decomposing in front of Alaria, who just has to smell it and watch it, and it's like, damn, that's really dark. It's really cool. Leaving it open to interpretation, way more horrific than torture porn. So I thought they did a really good job there. Um. Thus ends the Sand Snakes. And Alaria herself likely dies when the Red Keep is destroyed. Yeah, we just... <laughs> fucking rest in peace, Alaria. She's she just sitting there, depressed, until an entire building falls on her. She's like, what the fuck? It must have been wild. But what awaits the Sand Snakes in the winds of winter? Oh, Aha, God. this is my favourite part of the video and the bit where people, according to the analytics, people start dropping off slightly and it's like, okay, I guess some people only want to know fact as opposed to speculation, but I do like this part of my videos where I just kind of compile um, what I think will happen in the future, what could happen in the future. Sarah has been sent to face Sir Gerald Dane with Aereo Hotar and Sir Balon Swan. She may die at the hands of this anime villain, or maybe she'll forge an alliance with him. After all, they both want to bring war to the Lannister. Nymeria. So yeah, uh, let me know in the chat. What do you think is going to happen with Obara? What, 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 what is the, what's the purpose of the whole Dark Star fight? Like, what is the point? The only point I can imagine is it's a fun little distraction, and then Aereo returns, and then is just in the room while Duran is plotting because he's the camera that rides, or it's going to be the death of Aereo, where we used him initially to have certain insights, and then he'll have a dramatic death where he dies. Maybe Obara teams up with Darkstar and uh, kills Balon Swan and Aereo and rebels, and maybe Obara and Darkstar run off and join Young Griff, or maybe they... I don't know. I don't know, but... Or maybe Obara will be killed by Darkstar. Yeah, won't join Darkstar. Darkstar will wipe the floor with all of them. And then he will be established as a kind of villainous, powerful knight, right? He takes down three powerful warriors. He gets himself reputation. The viewer, the readers take him a bit more seriously. And then he'll play whatever role he plays in the future. He will soon join the small council, using her skills to spy and plot and manipulate. Perhaps driving the crown into further chaos. Of course, if Dawn sides with the invading Aegon Targaryen, who you can learn more about here, Lady Nim may be executed by the Lannisters. Yeah, that's another... Or I got Cersei in the Green Mantle right after she's been shaved. 
Um, well, I'll let this bit play. Perhaps she'll be assassinated by Varus in a deliberate attempt to cause chaos and push Dawn into Aegon's hands. The audio is okay, right, in this video? You don't think the music's maybe a bit too loud over my, my audio? Hopefully not. Um, but yeah, that's one of the things that could happen. That would be quite interesting, in my opinion. Um, if Nymeria, you know, Varys kills her to basically make it seem like the Lannisters killed her, and then Dawn is like, it's the final push of Dawn being like, fuck you, we're joining Young Griff. Or it could be that, like, they join Young Griff, or they're planning on joining Young Griff, so Nymeria's like, I'm going to stir up some tension, I'm going to cause some chaos, I'm going to fuck with Cersei, that kind of thing. Getting her revenge through scheming, you know. Or maybe she's going to kill some people. But that's what I talk about with uh, Tyene. Tyene, meanwhile, will be infiltrating the Faith. Her obsession with poison is not subtle. The question is, who will she poison in King's Landing? The High Septon himself? Or perhaps King Tommen to avenge Oberyn? If we accept the outlandish conspiracy that Alaras is Sorella in disguise... You know, outrageous, of course. Sorry, let me just go back to Tywin. Uh, Ty Tywin? Tywin for a second. Ty oh my... Stop! Tyeen. Um, yeah, again. Causing chaos. Feeding information about what's happening with the faith. I don't know. I don't know what the plan is for Tyeen. I'm interested. But as a, a poisoner in King's Landing who hates the Lannisters, surely something's going to go down. Maybe... Maybe she tries to poison Tommen and, or her and Nymeria team up to poison Tommen, but then Boros Blount tastes it and he dies and that's, and he's like, ah, he gets poisoned and that sends Cersei over the edge. That could be fun. Ting the Faith. Her obsession with poison is not subtle. The question is, who will she poison in King's Landing? The High Septon himself? Or perhaps King Tommen to avenge Oberyn? If we accept the outlandish conspiracy that Alaras is Sorella in disguise, she may help defend Old Town against Ironborn invaders, utilising her prowess with a bow. As Sam's protector, she may even play a larger role, helping him in the fight against the White Walkers. Yeah, it would be cool to see what Alaras the Swing gets up to. Um, will she, you know, because um, Sorella is known for being a good archer. Are, are we going to see some battle scenes against the Ironborn? Um, maybe against the Bloody Mummers who are heading for Old Town to reap chaos. Um, to Sorry, to sow chaos and reap the rewards. Uh, who knows? Um, yeah. I is she just like a fun little addition? Um, or is she going to play a big role? Is it going to be that she's like a, a main character in Sam's, in uh, Sam Tarly's storyline, like actively helping him uh, fight against the White Walkers, where it's like disconnected from Dawn and her siblings and her her uncle and so on and cousin, and just focusing on look all the war stuff, Young Griff stuff. I don't care, but this Sam Tarly guy, I'm gonna help him in the Night's Watch. That could be cool. Alaris up north uh, fighting against the White Walkers. Lady Lance herself, Elia Sand, appears in a Winds of Winter sample chapter, accompanying Ariane on her trip to John Connington. I, yeah, I can't believe I never considered that Tyene is basically Elia Sand or, or that I didn't bother mentioning in the video because that is a really good take like yeah she, she's basically Elia Sand um as in Tyene in the show is a, a stronger adaptation of Elia Sand than um than than Tyene it's like a mer they're both kind of merged together She's wild, insubordinate, and flirts with both Sir Joss Hood and Sir Garibald Shells. So this is like sample chapter stuff. There are some theories that she may seduce Aegon before Ariane and scupper any chance of a Dornish alliance. Only one thing- I disagree with that take. I'm not a fan of that one. The idea that Elias Sand will like seduce Aegon and Aegon will be like, I'm in love with you. And then the Dornish alliance collapses. It's like, uh, that feels kind of lame. Like that's the reason. I don't know. I, I I don't know. And we've we've already done the whole young king should marry someone, but then they fall for someone else, and that ruins it. Like we've done that with Rob Stark. So yeah, no. I'm not sure what the point of Elias Sand's going to be, but again, it could just be one of those. Gurm comes up with a bunch of char fun characters, and he's like, let's send them all in different directions and see what happens. Thing is for certain, vengeance and destruction. Bada bum bum, bada bum. Vengeance and destruction. 
and if the sand snakes of the show and the books have anything in common, it will likely be a grisly fate. I think the audio mixing slightly off in this video. Um, but yeah, rest in peace. Thanks for watching. Um, there we go. There's the sand snake video. This my this was a fun little stream. I think this was just a chill commentary stream. I'm not gonna end it yet. Um, I'll answer some questions if people have anything to send in. Look at the chat. We can talk about some stuff. Duncan Egg, new casting. That was pretty cool. Um, they look they look great. Duncan Egg look great. I'm very happy with that casting. It's funny that a Song of Ice and Fire fandom be like, you're only 6'4", you're not tall enough. Bad casting. <laughs> like no other fandom. If you would, by the way, if you would like this sigil, this FH Fantasy Haven Golden Sigil, on a hoodie, or on a beanie, then or on a mug, then check out fantasyhavenmerch.com. It should be in the description. Or you can just type it in. If you want to support the channel by checking out the merch, I've got this logo on some stuff and I've also got the the fancy haven head the character head on on a t-shirt on a mug and that kind of thing what's the next video someone asks the next video will be the real Varus uh, because I have lots of Varus assets anyway I said this at the start of my um the start of this live stream I had a two week break and I'm back and I'm like okay I need to pump out a video in a week or two I'm gonna do Varus, because I already have a bunch of assets already from my Young Griff video, so I can just reuse those. I don't repeat the Young Griff video too much, but I will be talking about show Varus and book Varus, and comparing them, and complaining. I, 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 the script's done, the art's done, and I finished recording the audio today. I need to edit the audio. Tomorrow I'm going to edit the audio and start creating the video, hopefully for this weekend, if not the next weekend. And then when it's out, that should keep the channel afloat. And give me some time to start working on some fun Hot D Law stuff, like, you know, Bracken Blackwood animated vid video um, to be released during Hot D. Uh, the Real Viserys, I want to release, like, the week before Hot D Season 1. Um, I have a bunch of different ideas. Um, my patrons know most of them. Um, but I'm kind of... I'm kind of hoping that, like... Every week of Hot D being out, there will be at least a live stream, a review, and then an extra video, being some kind of extra lore th video I worked on in advance, you know? Uh, like History of House Aaron or something like that. That could be lots of fun. What else? Um, maybe maybe episode breakdowns between each episode. A, a breakdown where I just do the classic like slideshow and I go through each scene and I break down what happened. I don't know, I feel like that's kind of lame. Like there are a load of channels doing that, I'm not sure if it's worth that. A badge or a button of my sigil, that would be really cool. I'll look into that. Uh, I haven't got that yet, but I could probably add it to fourth wall if they have that option. Um, Yeah, Crossfire said, I'm honestly surprised they went with Young Egg. Yeah, I'm glad. Um, of course, people are also saying <laughs> Egg's going to be aging. He's going to be aging uh, as the years go on. But that's fine. Like, I'm fine if by the time we get the Mystery Knight, Egg is 12 or 11. Like, that's fine. As long as he doesn't have an insane glow up and it's like, come here, my little squire. And it's like a moody teenager with his voice breaking. and That'll be a bit weird. Um, yeah. Oh, a theory of ice and fire is in the chat. Hello. They said, I've really enjoyed the stream. Thank you so much. Okay. So, in terms of live streams for this week... Um, to catch up on the Sand Snake stuff, I do, of course, want to do a um, Sand Snake Theory Iceberg video. I didn't do one for Bron because there weren't enough Bron theories, but I think for Sand Snakes there should be enough to do a fun little iceberg. It won't be as in-depth as, like, my Blackfire Theory Iceberg, right? But it should be, it should be fu fun enough. 
Um, and then there will be a live stream on Quinn the GM's channel. We're probably going to do another trial. We'll be putting more characters on trial because those are always chaotic and fun. Excuse me. And maybe another joint one, me and Quinn, on my channel. So, yeah, it'll be a busy live stream week. Uh, and I'll be working on that virus video and lots of other videos. I'm trying to. I'm theory. I'm trying to click on theory. Theory of Ice and Fire's YouTube channel, um, but I can't. It's not letting me. I like having mini slebs show up in my stream. That's always fun. We had Brugley that one time. Brugley, one million subscribers. What the hell was that about? Why did he watch my content? I love him. Um, we've had. We've had other e celebs pop into the chat every now and then. I had a, a furry vor artist animator channel comment on a few of my videos. And I was like, I got alerted by YouTube because they have over 100k subs. I got a notification. I was like, oh, okay. Hope you enjoy the video. <laughs> okay, so any more comments, any more questions, any, any more that you want to send me um, while I'm reading the chat. Any suggestions for future videos or anything you want me to make during Hot D... I could do like a recap for Hot D Season 1. I could be like, you know, running through what happened previously on House of the Dragon. Um, but again, other channels are going to be doing it and... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, yeah, there's actually a picture of the merch. Me talking about the merch, let me actually show it. Um, this is, it's funny because I talk about this in my Bron video. I added the Gaussian blur effect. Gaussian? Gaussian? I added a blur effect. So it was supposed to show the merch and then it would blur. And as it blurred, the text would come up saying fancyhavenmerch.com. Um, but I like, but I messed up. <laughs> I, like, I like, I completely messed up and I somehow made the entire screen completely blurry. So in the Bron video, I'm like, check out my merch and it's just like a blurry screen and it looks like I'm deliberately like hiding the merch like oh you have to find it yourself which isn't what I was trying to do and god damn it Theory of Ice and Fire says no YouTube videos yet I just run big space on the song of Ice and Fire I thought oh I thought Theory of Ice and Fire I thought you had videos I'm just I think I just there are so many Song of Ice and Fire channels out there I'm just trying to I know you've caught I've no, I remember you commenting on my videos I appreciate it I remember you commenting on my April Fool's um, video. Who enjoyed my April Fool's video, by the way? I mean, my completely serious tier ranking of a Song of Ice and Fire YouTubers. I got lots of good fe feedback for that. But yes, um, yeah, if you're interested, this is my, this is my merch stuff, uh, they come in different colours, by the way. They're not all black. Um, for example, I have a purple hoodie. So if you're interested, we have a hoodie with the Fancy Haven logo on it. It can be a bunch of colours. T-shirt with just plain old Fancy Haven on it. Again, different colours. That's a late Lord Haven t-shirt, which is more of a meme. Um, and then the Fancy Haven beanie genuinely slaps. It's genuinely... I know it's mine. <laughs> but like I, I bought the samples to make sure they were good enough quality. And the beanie's like, oh damn. And then, of course, we have some fun little mugs here. So we have the logo mug, Fancy Haven logo mug, and then Late Lord Haven mug. And I might add some more as time goes on. Especially when summer comes, I might add a cap. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cute. And then Patreon. There's exclusive House Dane video. There's ex exclusive access to the Discord at any at any tier. There's extended videos. There's um, voice chat sessions on the Discord. There's occasional patreon live live stream there's all kind of stuff i draw characters for you it depends on the tier but we have lots of fun in, and the main the main selling point is the discord we have fun we banter we have voice chat sessions it's pretty cool <laughs> fancy haven's unbiased review of his own merch it slaps it does hey if i bought the samples and they weren't good enough i wouldn't i i'd find a new website but i bought them and i was like damn fourth wall is where is the website it's genuinely pretty good other big YouTubers like Philip DeFranco use it. So I was like, hmm, let me check it out. Um, I think 
if no more super chats, no more tips, I think I might as well wrap up the video. Hey man, I bet you're really handsome. I just wanted to let you know. Thank you, Mr. Toasted Crumpet. Very kind of you. Very kind of you to guess. Um, okay, good stuff. I guess we'll wrap up now. Yeah, shall we wrap up? Let's do it. Um, thank you so much for watching the stream. There'll be more streams in the future. There'll be more videos.